Paul's Letter to the Romans, Chapter 1 Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle and singled out for God's good news, which he promised long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was a descendant of David according to the flesh, and who has been declared to be the powerful Son of God by the resurrection from the dead according to the Spirit of Holiness. We have received grace and apostleship through him to bring about the obedience of faith among all the nations on behalf of his name, including yourselves, who also belong to Jesus Christ by calling. To all who are in Rome, loved by God, called as saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because the news of your faith is being reported in all the world. For God, whom I serve with my spirit in telling the good news about his Son, is my witness that I constantly mention you, always asking in my prayers that if it is somehow in God's will, I may now, at last, succeed in coming to you. For I want very much to see you, so I may import to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, to be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Now, I want you to know, brothers, that I often planned to come to you, but was prevented until now, in order that I might have a fruitful ministry among you, just as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish. So I am eager to preach the good news to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. For in it, God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. For God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Since what can be known about God is evident among them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. Therefore, God delivered them over in the cravings of their hearts to sexual impurity, so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served something created instead of the Creator, who is praised forever. Amen. This is why God delivered them over to degrading passions. For even their females exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The males, in the same way, also left natural relations with females and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Males committed shameless acts with males and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty for their error.
And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they knew full well God's just sentence, that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Please click like if you are on Facebook or subscribe if you are on YouTube. But always remember, by sharing this video, you are sharing God's Word. May God bless and keep you.